technologies are beneficial in ontology development. There are a number of benefits that do come with using a foundational ontology in your domain ontology. Some of these are, they do increase the semantic interoperability between heterogeneous systems. They can be used as a starting point in ontology development. So in that sense, one can re avoid reinventing the wheel. Um, using a foundational ontology does speed up the whole process of ontology development and quite importantly they can greatly improve the quality of the system that you're modeling. Well there are a number of foundational ontologies available. These are Dolce, BFO, GFO, Sumo, Yamato and more. So in that sense there is variety for ontology developers to choose. However, there is a problem where most ontology developers are not too sure how to apply these foundational ontologies to their own domain ontology. So the reasons why ontology developers don't use them are that foundational ontologies, firstly, can be perceived as being a bit too abstract or too expressive in other cases. The actual time taken to uh, learn, grasp, and properly understand the foundational ontology is quite high. And of course, since there are different foundational ontologies, they do have conflicting theories and philosophies that they undertake. Okay, so there are a number of um, ontology development methodologies, some of these being meth ontology, neon, and others but these don't explicitly use foundational ontologies. So this brings about the bigger problem where ontology developers generally are not sure of which foundational ontology to use. This can be broken down into two parts. The first part being, it is unknown which foundational ontology to use for which scenario. And this brings us to the second part, if you do choose one, why should that particular foundational ontology be used? What are the reasons or criteria or types of parameters that one would associate with such a foundational ontology? Our approach into solving this problem, um, it involved firstly, forming a comparative study of foundational ontologies that are already existing. We looked at some published work works for this and created our own criteria as well. Then we identified important ontological criteria. Based on these two things, we created our own method or guidelines to, for a user to perform foundational ontology selection. So the question is, how does this help the user? This simply allows the user to firstly select a foundational ontology based on their own input and requirements and secondly, they can use our software to generate a sort of explanation for the choice. So we have realized this solution with our own software tool, Onset. For our methodology, we use the standard waterfall um, methodology used at most softwares, starting off with a literature review of different works. We then moved on to perform a comparison of the foundational ontologies. For this, we looked at published works and identified different types of criteria, and we found that a lot of published works were quite insufficient in this respect. We then selected some foundational ontologies to include in Onset. Now, based on this, we created a general criteria list that could be applied to all foundational ontologies, which we then verified by sending it to foundational ontology developers. Thereafter, we created some functional and non-functional requirement for our software. Based on this, we created an algorithm, which we then implemented into software. Next, testing was done using some existing and simulated scenarios for domain ontology development. And we needed to see if Onset was, in fact, extensible. So we tested the extensibility by adding other foundational ontologies. And lastly, we performed an experimental evaluation of Onset using some novice ontology developers. 
for our literature review, we looked at about 60 different publications and these are grouped as follows. Firstly, we have some official publications and developments, uh, documentations by foundational ontology developers such as the Wonder Web Deliverable, which gave us extensive information about Dolce, BFO and Orca foundational ontologies. Then there were comparative studies, which we found to be quite insufficient because they just focused on a limited amount of subtopics and these weren't put in any type of categories which was required. And lastly, we looked at case reports which um, looked at using foundational ontologies in domains such as the biomedical domain and so on. So presently we have Dolce BFO, GFO and SUMO foundational ontologies in onset. At first, we just had Dolce and BFO, and later on, we added GFO and SUMO, thereby proving that ONSET is, in fact, extensible. For a general list of criteria, we have five important categories that we have identified. Um, the first is ontological commitments. Ontological commitments are basically the philosophical choices and other kinds of commitments that the foundational ontologies take on. This could be an example of whether the ontology is that of particulars, as in Dolce, or of universals, as in BFO commonly. Then there were representation language, which is basically that, a representation language is a language used to represent a domain ontology. This could be OWL, OBO, KIF, and so on. Software engineering properties are very general properties that foundational ontologies take on, whether the licensing is free, um, whether they're modular and how. Subject domains, as I explained earlier, are simply the when foundational ontologies are used in certain subject domains, such as the geographical, biomedical, engineering, and so on. And lastly, we have applications, which are application scenarios of the domain ontology whether it is an application of the semantic web or ontology-based data ac access and so on. So for our initial criteria list, we have received feedback from Dolce, BFO, and GFO, thereby verifying their lists. Here, one of the deliverables of the comparison that we performed were some lists and tables. Here, there's a small section of the table of ontological commitments. For the full table, you can go to that link and find the rest of it. So any software needs some requirements. Here we'll talk about the functional requirements of onset. Well, firstly, the user's choices had to be stored since it was their requirements for their own domain ontology. Um, next. Naturally, the tool had to perform foundational ontology selection since that was the point. And furthermore than just selecting, it had to explain for selecting a particular foundational ontology. Then there's conflicting answers. Conflicting answers is basically uh, when a user has a requirement and that conflicts with what is offered by the foundational ontology of on that onset chooses. So the tool does provide conflicting answers for the user. Um, onto ont ontology references, uh, when there are some subject domains that the foundational ontologies have used, and if they are available, ONSET does provide this for the user. Additional questions are questions that don't affect the output of ONSET presently because of the foundational ontologies in it at present but some users might want to have a look at those additional questions, so we give an option of providing that. And optional scaling is when the user decides to rate uh, categories according to importance, so we may find that uh, ontological commitments are not as important as representation language. The user has a choice to do that. And lastly, the algorithm had to be extensible to add in other foundational ontologies at a later stage. Okay, I'm um, just going to skip through this and go to the algorithm. 
Um, the first part of the algorithm uh, gives the user a choice of whether or not to include additional questions. So we can see that in line one to five. Thereafter, the user decides on scaling, and if there is some scaling, then it's stored in an array. <coughs> For the next part of the algorithm, in line 16 and in line 17, questions and options per category are displayed for the user. And scale, the scaling value that was stored in the previous step is now applied here in line 19. In the same line, the counter variable for the respective foundational ontology that is affected is incremented, and the user's choices is stored in an array of ontological choices. Uh, for the next algorithm, firstly, we take, take a look at the four counter variables and to find the largest one. After that, we look at the largest one and we use that to select the foundational ontology to be used. And that is done in uh, line two, one to two, I think. Oh, sorry, I can't see properly from here. Okay, thereafter we use the arrays of ontological choices from the previous step, and this displays reasons or motivation for using that selected foundational ontology. Okay, lastly, if there are some subject domains that were used by that foundational ontology, that's displayed to the user. And if there are conflicting results, this is also displayed to the user. I'm just going to tell you how to use onset quickly. <coughs> well, starting off the tool is pretty simple. You just run the jar file, and this brings you to the start screen. And here you're presented with additional questions and scaling, so you choose accordingly whether you want this. And then if you don't want scaling, you can skip the step. Here we have um, the main window, which has different tabs of different categories. So in this sense, the design is modular. And we look at the first tab of ontological commitments here. As you can see, there is an explain button because not all users understand some of the terminologies used by foundational in foundational ontologies. So they could always use this to assist with definitions. And there's also examples in the explain button. Then moving on, you traverse through the different tabs. And this is the tab of software engineering properties. And lastly, you come to the tab where you decide to calculate your results. So here we see that the results was that GFO was the selected foundational ontology. And here we have a motivation for it below. And this is where conflicting answers come in. Uh, the user specified for a high level of granularity. However, GFO isn't, that doesn't provide a very high level of granularity, but Dolce does. So the user is told that, and uh, thereafter the user can do as he wishes. And uh, when there are some references, subject domains, the references are neatly provided to the user. We evaluated onset in different ways. One of the ways was we looked at some existing scenarios. So this is an example of semantic management of middleware. So for this example, their requirements were uh, descriptiveness, a multiplicative approach, possibilism, pejorantism, modularity, and for the ontology to be executed in executable language. We put in all these requirements into ONSET, and we note, notice that ONSET selects Dolce as a foundational ontology, and we have some reasons for that. And it is interesting to note that this choice that on, ONSET decided does correspond with that used in this, applications by the author, in this application by the authors. Next, we wanted to assess the scaling in onset. So for this, we created our own simulated scenario, the requirements being an ontology of universals to be realist in nature, represented in LDL, for it to be modular, 
to be represented, formally represent a scientific theory and for it, the domain of it to be that of life sciences. So we simply put these into onset without touching the scaling for now, leaving it as default, and we see onset chooses B of O. Then we wanted to assess whether the scaling did anything. So we assigned these values to each of the categories, and we see that onset now chooses Dolce as a foundational ontology. All this differs from the previous case where the the criteria was exactly the same and just the scaling is now altered. So it does, scaling does make a difference. Um, next, we performed an experiment to test whether onset is really useful with regard to correctness and to the time taken. So for this, we used some novice ontology developers from the com computer science honors class from the University of KwaZulu-Natal. So to set up, the class was given a short lecture on foundational ontologies and told of the experiment that was to be held in a week. Both the, the whole class was divided into two groups at random, and the first group was told to complete their tasks in a prescribed time by using their lecture slides and whatever resources they found on the net while the second group was told to do the same as the first group, but additionally given onset to use. Um, participants had to upload their answers to the courses Moodle, and in that way, the timing would be captured. To evaluate the tasks, we firstly assessed and compared the quality of answers of each group. We then looked at the time taken for the tasks of each group and compared this. And lastly, we looked at the user opinions of all the participants. Um, to assess the quality of answers, we use an accuracy measure, and that assigns points to when the participant selects the correct ontology and points for the reasons that they provide. So just to describe the tasks, for each task, there were five scenarios where the user was to create a domain ontology given some requirements, and given those requirements, they had to select the appropriate foundational ontology and to motivate for that. Uh, the, user was also, the users were also given some open-ended questions, and they had to use this to answer about the experiment. And group B was also asked for some feedback on onset. Um, here's one of the scenarios or the use cases that we used. Um, this was an example of an ontology of heart diseases. So um, the user was given this scenario, but I'll just read it out to you and point out the keywords which the user should have been able to pick up. So they were to develop an ontology of heart diseases. So if it's an ontology of heart diseases, it's part of the biomedical domain. And it says that the ontology must capture the intrinsic nature of the real world. So in this sense, uh, it must be a realist ontology. As such, entities that are not extended in space and time must don't have to be found in the ontology. So with this, we talk about abstract entities. Possible future conditions and previous conditions of the heart must be modeled. So in this sense, we talk about an ontology with an eternalist stance. And since it's a biological entity, you basically wish to register it with the OBO foundry that goes as, say. And lastly, the ontology must be modeled in owl to el So here, the representation language should be owl to el So this is just a summary of what I've just said. And for the results, we found that group B, the group using onset, performed much better than group A we see that they actually performed three times as better than group A in ontology selections. Furthermore, the time taken for group B was less than group A, so with this we realize that onset really does assist in foundational ontology selection and the time taken is less. Uh, furthermore, group B was quite impressed with the tool and felt that they wouldn't have been able to perform their tasks as easily without using onset. 
Uh, at the Masters of Artificial Intelligence seminar, Onset was well received, and this resulted in it being, using, being used in ontology engineering courses, both by UK University of KwaZulu Natal and the University of South Africa. Um, from the foundational ontology developers, Dolce, BFO, and GFO, we have received some positive feedback on the tool. So, to quickly re discuss, Onset allows the user to select a foundational ontology and explains for this. Uh, the method can be used at many times, whether it's at the start of ontology development or during when you want to improve your domain ontology. However, Onset does raise some new issues and questions, firstly being if the in proposed WonderWeb foundational ontology library did exist, then foundational ontology selection wouldn't have been much of an issue. Uh, secondly, the idea behind foundational is that it's just one um, foundational ontology. Well, we see that sometimes conflicts in answers arise, and sometimes it could be to the point where more than one foundational ontologies are applicable. Also, scaling affects this, so the foundational ontology may be altered with scaling. Um, to investigate this, these issues, onset can be used. Just to conclude, we see that onset does solve the problem of uh, ont foundational ontology selection. It uses user requirements and criteria. Furthermore, it provides the user with motivation. Uh, the compiled criteria list and the, and the software is the first paper-based and software-based implementation in on foundational ontology selection. Onset has been evaluated in a number of ways with regard to its functionality, usefulness, and quality, and has yielded some positive results. Uh, just currently, we are working on a repository of foundational ontologies, which Onset will be a part of. And it may also be useful to <coughs> include Onset in an existing ontology development methodology. Um, furthermore, we'll be at the demo session later, so come and visit us and you can try out the tool yourself. And if you want to see view other resources pertaining to Onset, you can just go to the following link. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I think the, the, the work is very interesting, and I have uh, two questions. The first one is uh, regarding the um, extendability, extendability of the software. Because uh, as you mentioned in, at the beginning, you need to uh, analyze manually all the ontol foundational ontologies to extract the criteria and the different uh, values for these criteria. So how you think is um, possible? Do you think it's possible to extend with a, a minimum effort uh, with other foundation and ontologies? I'm getting the last part. Do I think it's meaningful? I, I mean, uh, you need a lot, a lot of effort for analyzing ontologies manually. Do you uh, have uh, an idea of uh, doing uh, some kind semi-automatically or in another way? Um, in order to avoid human effort for analyzing the ontologies? Well, I haven't really thought of it, but I think that's the whole point of Onset, because other people won't have to manually do that. Well, we have looked at all the resources and did, performed it so that the software does it for other people, but for me to get it to be done semi-automatically, I don't think it's possible. I'm not too sure. I think maybe it's one of um, uh, um, uh, um, problems of the approach that uh, someone should analyze first the ontologies to include in the in the tool, yeah. And then uh, to decide uh, finally which uh, foundational ontology is the best one for a particular use case, how do you, uh, how do you manage the different criteria with respect to the requirements the um, the user? Um, provides to the to the tool. Um, I don't understand. Could you just explain? Some kind of, uh, formulas oh yeah, uh, yeah. For for the foundational, uh, um, there are points that are 
assigned to to each um, to each criteria. So in that sense, if the user selects if it's to be an ontology of universals, then the counter for BFO and whichever other ontologies that are of universals increases. So that's the way we do it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, um, I'll just speak up. <laughs> I'll pretend it makes me feel sorry. Um, so when you, what's the gold standard? How do you know what the right answer is? Well, if we look at what requirements uh, somebody wants, then we match those requirements to what is offered by the foundational ontology and uh, assign points, as I said. So in that way, it can be calculated. That would suggest that if you are already expert in the different foundational ontologies, the tool might not be useful, or would it be useful anyway? Have you tested it against people who are familiar with all these ontologies, if there are any? I don't know of anybody who's very familiar with all these foundational ontologies. Maybe we have Stefano Borgo, who from the from oh. Bolsh did so, and he did play around with it just to see if, okay, how does our ontology compete in a certain scenario with any of the other ones? Uh, and that is also one of the reasons why this, this tool actually can be used for further investigation on what are the different scenarios that maybe you can create a gold standard, because at the moment there is not, but the tool actually can help with that to figure out is there cert such thing as a standard scenario for this scenario that on foundation ontology works. Actually, we now we don't, but with this one we can gather that data. It would also be good if you haven't already, the community was appreciate a, a nice survey paper on all this because I don't there aren't any good survey papers that go into depth on each of the ones and you guys may be the only people on the planet who have read all 60 papers okay okay so, so 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 my main question is related with the i mean how difficult it is to explain the notion of universal particular descriptive uh, realist and so on and so forth to to the students i mean i mean if, if you i mean how you transform or how do you explain in a in a language that can be understood by master students or the general public or even though to to us in this meeting room how do you try to I think uh, I'll just run the tool for you so you can actually see the explain buttons and see how it's provided So for the universals, um, okay, I can't really read this, it's too far away from me. But as you can see, there is some sort of definition and the example with it uh, is meant to help those who don't really have an understanding of these complex terms. So this is close to natural language that we speak in every day. So in this way, we hope for the students to understand also related with Mari Carmen's question. So it seems to me from the description of the algorithm that you are not using any kind of uh, multi-criteria multi -criteria de decision system for weighting the, the, the different criteria and for providing the, an answer to the, to the, <laughs> to the students. So, 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 so do you plan to use in the near, in the near future this kind of uh, multi-criteria decision algorithms? I haven't thought of it, but it's definitely something that I will look into. Yeah, we, we, we do have a, a limited uh, implementation of the weighting with respect to just the categories, but not for the individual questions that you can say, and this is more important. So if you're saying uh, my ontological commitments are more important than the language, you can say that, but you cannot as fine-grained 
to the individual questions, but yeah, only by category I can do that at the moment. And that is included in the algorithm. Nobody has any burning questions. If you have a burning question, I mean, there will be the conversation afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will quickly introduce the next. Um, Maria Poveda. Oh.